So I went to VataWare and I searched a flight between uh, Corfu and Amsterdam. And basically, I found a route, this one right here. You can use anything such as uh, VatRoute or VRoute, these special softwares, as long as you get this little route here. So I'm now going to go to my route page on the FMC to enter this route. The first point is Tigra. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to type in T. And the first point is direct, so it's immediately we fly directly to Tigra. So I'm going to click here and say direct to Tigra. The second point you see it's via UL995, which is an, air, an um, airway, to Bravo Romeo um, Delta. So I'm type in UL995 and I'm going to hit it now on the left side uh, in the VIA column. It's going to say, okay, you want to go via UL995 towards something. And I need to say what I want to go towards. So B R D. Hit enter. And there, there we go. So I'm going to go to my next point. Next point is via UL61. Whoops. If you make a mistake like I did right now, you can hit clear a couple times until the scratch pad is empty. Finished uh, entering my, my route. And it was a pretty long route, so I had to click next to go into the next page and continue there. Just a quick information, say I want to delete this part right here. You can simply click delete, delete will show up here, and I click here, and it disappears. So once I've entered my route, I'm going to go to my departure arrival button, which is right here. I'm going to go to departure, so I see the, the, the airport uh, go, uh, going from and towards and I see I'm cancel select the departure departure from the airport I'm going to it makes sense but I'm gonna select the departure from the airport I'm leaving which is uh, Kofu and the departure I'm gonna choose the runway which is 17 at this moment and the important thing is it says okay for example this one is Kilo Romeo Kilo 1 Alpha towards Kilo Romeo Kilo so the last fix in this departure procedure is Kilo Romeo Kilo and it's important that the last point in this fix, in, the, in this departure, is the first point we entered um, into the flight plan. So the first point we entered in the flight plan was Tigra, right here. So I'm going to go to the next page and I see, okay, Tigra. So I can choose one Charlie, one Delta, I can look at my charts, which one. But it's important that I choose the one that enters in Tigra. If you don't do this, um, the UFMC is going to uh, get a little confused about how to match up the departure route and the actual route. So it's like this one, it shows up here. And it's going to say, okay, do you want to, you want this? See the little yellow warning light? I'm going to hit execute. And it's going to send it to the flight management computer. And on your navigation display, you'll be able to see that the route has been added. So now that I've done my departure, I can also go to arrival and go here, Amsterdam arrival, and choose an arrival um, thing. Now you see it says approaches and stars, but um, I'll do this during the flight since this flight is a pretty long flight. Go to init ref right here, and it's going to bring me to my perf 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 performance init page, and it, uh, and um, it's important that I enter some good information to here so the UFMC can do some proper VNAV calculations. I'm start with my cruising altitude, which is to be entered as an FL for flight level, and then whatever the flight level is. For example, three two zero on my flight. It's not going to be entered here. Right now, it's already calculated my gross weight and my zero fuel weight. I'm going to enter the amount of reserves I want to uh, enter. And so this is the, you know, you have the all your fuel you have on board. Um, a large percentage of that is needed to get to your destination. And also a small percentage around between 10% of your fuel on board is just for reserve for safety. So I'm going to say, okay, about 9 kilograms of fuel. So that takes that into account. And then I add into my cost index. Now, cost index was something that was added to the flight management computer. Um, for airlines to save costs, um, so really, it, it can get it can get really in, really into depth in what's the best cost index. And uh, for pilots and real airlines, the airlines would choose the costings for them. But normal values are around 100, between around 80 and about 150. So I'm gonna select 90 for this flight. On, on the right side, I can select my step size. Now, what's the step size? As you fly, the weight will decrease uh, of the aircraft, and so you will have less fuel burn if you climb at higher altitude. So in long flights, most of the, air, uh, the aircraft will climb to something like flight level 320, and then halfway through the flight, it will maybe climb to flight level 340. 
So if you click here, you'll see you'll cycle through certain um, heights of step size, so in thousands of feet. I'm going to select 2,000 feet. So the, view, the UFMC will automatically calculate um, when the optimal time is during your flight to increase from flight level 3 to 0, 2,000 feet up to flight level 3, 4, 0 in this case. So now that I've entered all of my information here, I'm going to go to the first limit page. Now, um, there's different takeoff settings. Um, I'm not going to go into what thrust limits are. You'll have to read the UFMC manual for this. But basically, if you have a long runway, you can select something like takeoff 2 or takeoff 1. If you have a very short runway, you need as much thrust as possible. You want to select takeoff. So at takeoff, you have 97% N1. At takeoff 2, you only have 83%. This is a medium sized runway, so I'm going to select this one right here takeoff 2. And so it says, okay, it's selected takeoff 1. And it's armed climb one, so when it goes through the thrust reduction altitude, it will automatically switch to climb one. It will also show you the outside temperature, and if you want, you can also um, set your own temperature. If, but this is very, very, very in-depth uh, thrust limit usage. Uh, refer to the manual of the UFMC for this basic advice. Also, select takeoff one depending on the runway size. I'm now going to go to my final page of the pre-flight procedure, which is the takeoff page. And some important information to be entered here. The most important is the flap position. So for this takeoff, I'm going to choose flaps 10, so 10 degrees of flaps. And it's going to calculate, OK, the V1 speed will be around 122, the V uh, reference speed, uh, I mean, the rotate speed of 132, and the V2 speed 134. Uh, it says, OK, you have a, a headwind of 1 degree right now. Uh, there's no slope at the moment. If it would say, for example, U02 would be up by 2 degrees. Burner conditions is dry at the moment. Uh, this is your thrust reduction altitude, so it says, okay, at 1,000 feet, I will switch to climb one. This is your um, engine out acceleration altitude, so if you if you lose one engine, um, this is your acceleration altitude. One of the most important things to do is to um, s select your reference speed. Now, just a quick note, uh, at the bottom here, you'll see these numbers, which, uh, these letters which say pre-flight. If you see this, you, it means that you have not done all the necessary procedures. And the things that we have not done yet is select the reference speeds. For example, if I click here, the reference will go away saying, okay, I confirm that this is the speed I want. Maybe I say, okay, for just so I don't hit the tail speed, I'm going to select a higher reference speed. So I'm going to select 129 knots. And I hit it there. Again, the reference will go away. And if I go here, the reference will go away. As you see, I've selected confirmed all of them, the pre flight will go away, and now I'm finished with my pre flight procedure. Um, I most times keep it on this page so I can quickly see these numbers. UFMC will automatically give an oral warning, uh, a low guy will say, V1, rotate, V2. Um, but otherwise, this is really all you have to do with the UFMC before flight. You can now start the engines um, and take off, and after, after take off, make sure you engage uh, LNAV and VNAV, but m most of this is really um, done in the UFMC manual. So I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the tutorial, I hope you learned a lot from it, um, but the most important thing is read the UFMC manual, this is just something to help you, the UFMC manual still has a lot more information in this video.